Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Been in a little bit of a, an Isaac slump recently. L-N-P-J-G-Y-L-9. A um, little bit, you know what? Probably because we're doing stuff like that, but I'm willing to, I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, just don't get hit by a champion. Lull, forehead. You know, we finished the uh, last episode talking about uh, a Kickstarter invention that I, I wouldn't say I took issue with. I just think it's dumb. <laughs> That's one of the things, you know, people are always talking about, uh, oh, in the modern era, you know, everything's politicized and yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, if you don't agree with me, then you're dead to me and stuff like that. No, I don't, I don't really agree with that statement, you know, I think... We, we do live in probably increasingly political times, and there's positive and negatives associated with that. But one of the things that, that annoys me uh, is the fact, I feel like we've lost a little bit. Wait, can I open this with the boomerang? That did cross over it. Well, I don't know if we've lost, because, you know, so you ever read, like, you know, Roman graffiti? I know that sounds ridiculous, but you, you ever read about Roman graffiti, I guess is a much more sensible way to put it. Basically, the idea is that, you know, the idea that there's a trending downwards in our in our level of discourse uh, is essentially garbage. Um, because if you go back and read, like, Roman graffiti, it was still just like, Hey, eat my butt, Octilius! Stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I feel like to some extent we've lost the ability to just say something is not for us. I've really gotten a lot of freedom lately out of being like, I just don't like this thing. I think that's, uh, it, I, I used to, and I, I do, I mean, I wouldn't say I blame the scholastic system for this, but to some extent, you know, I think we're trained in argument and rhetoric in school that we have to have great reasons to defend our opinions, and, you know, here's a, a, a five-paragraph essay detailing why I think Undertale's the best game ever made, and, you know, explain to me logically why you like this, but you don't like this. You know, you, you feel like that's something that is obligated to response just by virtue of the civility in which it's asked, and I, I've, I've really come to rebel against that in the previous few years. I love to be able to articulately say why I like something, and sometimes I can easily say why I don't like something, um, but sometimes I do just don't like something. It, it's very freeing, you know? I've, I think I've explained my piece on this Kickstarter idea. I wish the people who made it well. I hope they come up with a better idea in the future, but I think their present idea is really bad. It feels great. Not, not to you know, crap on their dreams of making a business. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take a little potato peeler action here. This could be fun. Um, just don't use it too aggressively early. And static tears are amazing here, of course. You know, to be like, you know, I, I don't really like uh, that movie. And they're like, why? And you're like, I don't really want to get into it. And if they, if somebody replies to that and goes like, ha, I beat you. All right, you beat me. Guess what, brother? Still don't like the movie. And, uh, you know, maybe you defeated me intellectually. Hope you enjoy the dopamine hit, but check this out. I'm gonna go sit on the couch and play some Nintendo Switch. If you want to join me, the room code is, uh, F-U... I'm just joking, okay? There's other, um... The other Dragon's Den slash Shark Tank inventions that showed up in that Good Mythical Morning episode were also really bad. The worst one, and I, I agree with them, and I, I will vouch for Good Mythical Morning, by the way. Um, it's, it's one of the only things I actually watch on YouTube next to um, the music video for uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony first of the month. I think that's how we want to handle this. I think I'm good to go. Uh, I don't want to go to the curse room. It seems a little dicey. Uh, it's one of the only shows I watch. I find, you know, Red and Link are, are definitely business people, but I also find they have an affable chemistry and, and a good comedic nature. And uh, there was a brief period about a year ago where the episodes got, in my opinion, demonstrably worse. And I think a lot of people washed out. And uh, 
never came back. Well, maybe not a lot of people. It's not like they're not, you know, incredibly successful. But whenever I talk about Good Mythical Morning, people are like, yeah, I stopped watching them when things got bad during that one season. I'm like, dude, I agree with you. I, I thought they sucked for about a month as well. They took that feedback to heart, retooled the show, and then... Uh, eventually just scrapped the new direction they were going into and are, are still just eating a bunch of garbage now and i i love it <laughs> they, they've returned to form in my opinion anyway um i'll vouch for that show so you, you can go check that episode out on you know youtube.com slash good mythical morning if you want but the worst invention and, and i believe they agreed was uh a, a, a headphone that's bluetooth enabled but you don't wear it you you kind of inject it into your, you, you surgically implant it, I guess is the word you would use, into your brain, or into your ear canal. Um, Kate and I actually talked about this. I don't know if it's a generational difference. I mean, we only have a four-year uh, age gap between us. But, uh, you know, that's enough to some extent that I grew up under different conditions and am at a slightly different place in my life, you know? I'm not saying there's a huge divide, but there, there's differences that I think are attributed to the, the era in which we grew up. For example, uh, if you put a Super Nintendo controller in Kate's hands, she doesn't know what to do. And I, I get this is based on experience, but that experience is informed by the era in which we grew up. If you put a PlayStation 3 controller in my hand, I don't know what to do. You know, if you, if you sit Kate down in front of Super Mario World, she will probably lose all of her lives before she beats the first castle. If you sit me down on the PS3 interface and go, okay, download and start Netflix, I'll be there for an hour. I'll probably have to Google it. I figured it out yesterday, you know, it's not in video settings. You know, there's a big video player. That's not where it goes, Grandpa. You know where the Netflix app is? Right next to it, there's a play button that says video and multimedia apps. That's where Netflix is. It's not in the PlayStation embedded video files, moron. Anyway, um, but she was like, it's a dumb idea. But if there was ever a safe and, uh, you know, trusted way to implant Bluetooth enabled headphones into my head, I might consider doing it. And I was like, are you joking? And she's like, nah, I think, you know, she she's way more open to the idea of like, it, technology that's essentially embedded into the human body and I'm like man I'm not saying I uh, you know the Android or, or cyborg level uh, stuff I'm not saying I wouldn't engage in it you know but it's gonna have to be a more compelling offer for me personally than just not having to pop earphones in or headphones on in order to listen to music or the new Hardcore History episode, which is probably more likely. Um, you know, if you can give me... I always thought, like, it's scary, and I think that there's a Black Mirror episode in here somewhere, and it, it's not very subtle, but, um, like, it would be amazing. You know, actually, now that I think about it, I've never reevaluated this as an adult. It's actually, I don't think it would be that amazing to be able to access the internet from your mind without requiring a device. Back when I was 15, I, I thought that that would be an amazing advantage, you know? To be able to access the internet wherever you are at any given time. The truth of the matter is that you, I mean, we have a device right now that essentially allows you to do that. You can carry it with you in, in your pocket. You know, it's called a cellular telephone. Look it up, sweetheart. The only real reason I could think of that it would be a huge advantage is if you wanted to, like, you know, cheat on your scholastic exams. But surely your exams would be reconfigured uh, to be substantially more difficult if you had internet access wired into your actual human brain. Anyway. You know, I used to think that that would be, like, the, the peak of human intellect, to have internet access on tap. Also scary, because you'd probably just spend way more time on Reddit or where, wherever you go, that you pretend is better than Reddit, but is actually just angrier. Um, where are we going here? Dude, Epiphora is doing great work for us here. I don't know what I would have to engage in. Like, you know, I'm almost to the... I, I'm getting to the age where, you know, if you could give me robot legs that let me jump 
you know, 40, 50, 60 feet in the air. What do I need those for? You know? Granddad didn't need to be able to jump 40 feet in the air. I guess that's the thing, is that when you're young, you think about, like, you know, oh, we're gonna get robot brains that let us think way faster. We're gonna get robot arms that we could lift a car. I mean, I guess it would be more useful to... To be able to lift heavier objects, wouldn't need to hire movers as often. But uh, in reality, I mean, I'm just spitballing here. I have no idea. But I'm guessing that the more immediate applications would be like from a, a maintenance standpoint, right? Like it wouldn't be like, hey, grandma, check it out. Now you can jump over a skyscraper. It would be like, hey, grandma, you know, the myelated... A uh, myelinated sheath that surrounded your neurons has been replenished with a, a a nootropic goo or something like that. The applied by nanobots, it wouldn't be like you know. Oh, now grandma can see through walls. <laughs> It'd probably be like you know, she she has a, a keener intellect now. She's she's more like her younger self. You know. I think I'm willing to go, you know, we, we got third level me boy. No reason to coupon this situation, I think. Um, let's go. Uh, am I willing to give this a shot? I really shouldn't. All right, well, we're going with Crooked Penny. I, I appreciate that it made the decision for us, but we probably would have been better off with Blank Card, but I think we still got a great setup here. Um, I was also watching uh, an another YouTube video. Most of these are introduced to me through Kate. Not that I'm defending, you know, my right to watch a YouTube video, but I don't watch that much YouTube, and I'll, I'll give you the honest reason why. It kind of feels like being at work. I know that so maybe sounds strange, but, you know, Twitch is like a, it's a little different uh, for reasons I can't explain. Uh, I, I don't really have a good grasp on it, but watching YouTube videos, like passively consuming content on YouTube, it's like being at the office on my day off. It's a platform that I, I guess I find it a little less enjoyable to be a consumer. Now if you enjoy pr consuming content on YouTube, obviously I'm for that. I'm just saying for me personally, I find it a little weird. It's like seeing your teachers in the grocery store on a Saturday, you know? You know, Miss Simmons, you're not supposed to be a real human being. You're supposed to live in the classroom after I leave. Um, but, uh, you know, we're probably going to end up moving within the next six months or so. It's kind of up in the air right now. It's good news, by the way. It's not like, you know, our landlord told us they were going to evict us. But, uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in the science of moving. Because moving sucks. People who, who move a lot, I, I really feel like they are masochists. Um, or in the case of my parents, uh, sadists, because they forced me to move a lot as well. Um, not in schools. Like, they, they kept me in the same school the whole time, but... You know, between the ages of... Uh, and I wasn't there for every move, by the way. Um, but uh, b between the ages of, like, 14 and, I mean, 30, basically, they've moved maybe seven or eight times. So uh, every other year, more or less, they've made a move. I don't think we want that. It's close, but I don't think it gives us enough. So hopefully this is good. Hopefully this is good. I... Why? <laughs> anyway. But, uh... You know, I when I lived in Korea, I was always amazed. Almost everybody lives in uh, apartment buildings. And apartment buildings present an interesting uh, encumbrance to you when you're moving. Especially because a lot of these apartment buildings don't have, uh, you know, elevators. They're a little bit older or a little bit smaller. Um... And the staircases are pretty narrow. So how do you get beds? How do you get couches? You know, Korean furniture probably does tend to be a little bit smaller than North American versions. But the way that they did it is... Um, I mean, there's a variety of different ways, I suppose. But uh, they had these lifts that would just essentially... It's like a big uh, mechanical ladder. It leans up against your uh, apartment window. And then you just strap furniture, boxes, etc., etc. onto it. Um, and then it sends it up to where your balcony would be, if you have a balcony at least. You get it on the balcony, unload it through, you know, the they tend to be larger sliding glass doors and just put it right into the uh, 
apartment. And I thought that was ingenious. You know, it, it it's kind of impractical, I guess, in a in a society. Well, depending on where you live, you know. In my hometown, I don't know, probably less than 10% of the population lives in apartment buildings. Most people live in single detached homes. You don't really need an industrial lift in order to move into one of those. You know, you got big doorways. You can drive a big truck right up to the front of the house and carry stuff in through the front door. Um, but I also, I, I saw a video. Um, I think it was the IRL channel of June's Kitchen, but I can't remember now. But they, got, uh, they did a sponsored video for a Japanese moving company because they were moving in Japan. And... Uh, it was amazing to me. You know, like, we've hired movers in uh, in Canada before, in Vancouver before, and, and I, I've, I mean, I worked as a mover for a little bit, and it's, like, no disrespect at all to movers. <sighs> why, did, why did I do it? I always try to get a little greedy with it, right? Um, movers in North America, I don't think do a fantastic job but the job itself also sucks and if they do a good job they are likely to still get paid the same which is not very much and then beyond that uh what do they get you know they get a thank you i think it's one of those jobs where like you only notice if if they break something you know you don't notice a job well done a job well done is competent a job poorly done is like is very apparent anyway be nice to your movers, you know, they're not just because they're carrying your stuff, but because it's a job that, to be honest, you probably don't want to do. Um, but the Japanese moving company I saw, when I saw the video, I was like, this service must cost, I don't know, $2,000, at least. And I don't think it does. I, I, I imagine it's probably a few hundred, but uh, so let, me, let me paint a picture for you. Every time I have moved in my entire life with, with movers, what do I do? And I imagine this is true for everybody. You spend, like, weeks packing. You pack up everything in the boxes. You pack up your dishes. You pack up, uh, you know, your books. You pack up your electronics, etc., etc. Um, the only thing that I would tend to leave for the movers is, I mean, I would have the movers maybe move the boxes, depending on how heavy they are, and furniture that I don't want to move, you know? If I got a heavy sofa or an armoire or something like that, a chest of drawers, I would rather have them carry it. Um, then, then have myself carry it. And I've done moves by myself, by the way, or, you know, with, with my roommates in college. So I, I've been on all sides of this coin, I promise you. If you're trying to move, explain something to me, it will not be done. Tough luck. Um, why would I buy something that makes things half price and then immediately take a 50% chance to get everything, including that item, for free on the final shop of the game? There's just no sensible reason for that. Anyway, um, so what? What is this company? Um, I don't know. Maybe you can approach it in the same way. But when they come over, it's not you know two or three people helping you move. It's literally a team of like six people for a small apartment. They come over. They pack everything for you. So it takes a while. Not only do they pack it, but they have special boxes for everything. They got special boxes for clothes that have, like, uh, a place you can hang uh, clothes hangers on. They got special boxes for dishes that have, like, little dish racks in them so your dishes don't get broken. They got special boxes for your light fixtures, you know, your, your ceiling lights. I don't know if we can afford to grab that, unfortunately. Uh, and, and the way that they work is you screw in the light to the box because it keeps it from rattling around and, and possibly breaking the light bulb off in the socket which is tough or you know just leading to broken glass regardless because they're fragile probably should have taken dark bomb so they they pack up your whole place for you they pack up your drawers your your bathroom you know medicine cabinet not only that but on the boxes they draw a picture of where things were in the medicine cabinet to begin with or in your, you know, uh, your dresser. So that you know where to put everything back. It's a level of service that I would actually feel bad receiving. Like, I feel... It, it, it's like being royalty or something like that. Like, you don't have to do that. They put up uh, runners, you know, all over your house. So that nothing, uh, you know, scrapes the walls or anything like that. I got hit twice on this room. Do, please do not speak to me. I'm embarrassed. So that, you know, that's a day. They come over, they pack up all your stuff in the most organized fashion you can imagine. Uh, they take all the boxes. 
Next day, you go to your new apartment, right? You got a new team of five or six people. They take all the boxes and they unpack it. And they unpack it according to the specifications that were written on the box from earlier. You know, from the from the previous employees. So they restock essentially all your cabinets, your drawers, your medicine cabinet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, to the exact same or at least a, a reasonable facsimile of the way that they were organized in your previous apartment. Literally, you don't pack, unpack, or move boxes. Yes. The entire moving experience. I mean, you gotta, you know, set up your own cable and stuff like that your own internet of course but then the company also sells furniture so they basically you know before you move they have like a consultant come over and the consultant is like so your new place like do you have uh thank god there's more keys in your new place do you have uh you know a washing machine and you'll be like no nah, i can't we got a washing machine here but the new place is unfurnished we don't have a washing machine so you could buy a washing machine through them and then you know they'll move it in for you it's a crazy business um and it blew my mind i mean at this point I, i'm just i'm telling an anecdote of which i have no experience right like i've only seen the video but still i was like man i was torn between two different things one is why don't we have that level of service here and then simultaneously within that realization was the idea that um, I would never, ever let anyone do that to my stuff. Not because I would be worried about them, you know, stealing or breaking anything, but I would honestly just feel too bad. Like, to sit... It, 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 I'm not insulting the YouTubers who made the video, because it was, a, for one, it was a sponsor video. For two, if you don't have this switch in your brain that tells you, like, I gotta get in there and help even though I'm paying them to do this, more power to you. I think you're sane. You know, I'm the guy who, uh, you know, when I go to a restaurant and a, you know, waiter is like, uh, how are you tonight, sir? I'm like, ah, you didn't need to call me. Just call me Ryan. I'm weird about it. I don't like to be waited on or doted upon. I, I really like my, my autonomy and, and independence, I guess. But, yeah, it was the idea that, like, man, I would love to have something like that here. So, uh, you know, moving was way less of a hassle. And, you know... Even if it was expensive, the idea that it would at least be an option, you know, is is cool. But uh, then I was like, nah, dude. If they were in my house, I, I would have to leave. That would be, like, the bare minimum. For sure, I could not be there while it was taking place. We used to have, like, um, you know, my parents had, uh, like, a, a house cleaning company that would come and clean the house. And eventually, we just had to leave because it was just weird. Like, I don't know. I, th I feel weird being in the house while somebody that I pay to do labor that I could do but just have chosen is not worth my time, like, does something. It, it, I don't know. It, it might sound like I'm being, uh, like, a fat cat, and I don't really mean it like that. But, you know, if my stove breaks and uh, I, a contractor comes over or something to repair it, um, that doesn't bother me at all because I'm like, yo... It's not like I'm just going to pop into YouTube and be like, hey, how do I fix my gas stove so that my uh, apartment doesn't blow up, you know? That's relatively specialized labor. I don't mind being there, you know, in the other room while that takes place. But if, uh, you know, a, a cleaning professional comes over and is, like, mopping my floors and I'm just in the other room watching Netflix, that makes me feel real weird. <laughs> I find that very uncomfortable. I don't know, it's just, it, there's there's something about it, and I get that it's a job, but there is something about it that to me just says like, yeah, like, my time's just worth more than yours, I'm sorry to say. We, lo we looked at it, you said you were charging 25 bucks an hour, I said, you know what, it's worth 25, I'm already here in my house, I could be doing it, but it's worth $25 an hour for me to just have you do it and I'll just sit around here. You know, it's not even like I was doing anything important. I don't know, it feels strange to me. Yo, we did get a deal with the devil. That's not to say I wouldn't take advantage of it, but... I also, like, I don't know if, if you guys are like this. I'm not like this, but my mom is like this. And I think Kate is like this. Where whenever, um, like... It basically went like this, you know? My dad was like, hey, we're doing pretty well. 
one of the biggest stresses in your life, which, you know, we're blessed to have this be the biggest stress, maybe, or, well, you know, in the top ten, is uh, cleaning the house. For, you know, under a hundred bucks a month, we could keep it pretty much spotless, and you don't even have to lift a finger. So that was, in theory, it's a great idea, right? You know, it's a mental load off, take a little bit more time to relax. In practice, what happened is that the day before the cleaning crew arrived, my mom would just clean. And then my dad, because she doesn't want them to show up and be like, wow, look at how dirty this house is, right? And then my dad would be home, and he would be like, well, my wife is cleaning all by herself, so now I'm going to clean so I don't feel bad. So they would clean the house before the housekeeping arrived. And then, I mean, housekeeping would do a more thorough job. But they would do, the housekeeping would do the stuff that's, like, ridiculous, like, you know vacuuming under your bed or like you know dusting the top of the refrigerator and stuff like that just stuff that was uh i'm not gonna say unnecessary but are relatively low priority chores i think it's fair to say and i think uh if we had that set up kate would be very similar she'd be like you know we can't have the housekeeper come over until the house is clean. And I would be like, well, why have the housekeeper then? I could be spending that 25 bucks uh, every other week on Apex Legends microtransactions. I'm joking. I haven't purchased any Apex Le I mean, I haven't even played Apex Legends in like a week and a half now. But anyway, I was just doing it for the bit. I just don't know if anybody else is like that, you know? I mention this all the time. But I'm still, like, I, I'm, you know, of course, wary of the rise of uh, automation and what it means for the labor market, uh, not just, you know, within an economical context, but, like, with, with respect to, like, you know, the number of jobs for human beings that are going to be lost and stuff like that, and where does that leave society? But simultaneously, the one uh, arena in which I'm extremely pro-automation without any reservations is uh, restaurants. Please uh, let me... You, you can seat me after that let me order off of a tablet or something like that oh my god I would like to mention that I have avenged you oh and I have won in Tetris 99 yo just now. congratulations I was only playing it to avenge you because I knew you deserved the <laughs> I did get a couple of seconds on stream today yo let's go we probably should have opened them first but I guess then it would have doubled the items that it already was um, where was I? I forgot what I was saying. Where was I? It was talking about, oh, the autonomous uh, restaurant experience. It's not that I don't like, uh, or like I'm scared of talking to waiters and waitresses and maitre d's and stuff like that. It's really just that I find it, um, inefficient. I know that makes me sound like Sheldon. But, like, when I am ready to leave the restaurant, why make me wait until you walk by and then go, you know, oh, excuse me. And they go, yeah, what can I get you? And I go, can I have the bill, please? And they go, sure. And then they come back with a receipt and yada, 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 right? Do you need the machine? Of course, I need the machine. It's 2019. They come back with the machine and then you pay and they're like, how was your night? And I'm like, I don't know you, you know. You get the idea. Let me interface with a robot for that portion. I would be out of your restaurant faster. You could seat more patrons and make more money. Dude, is this Vampire's Kiss is crushing it for us. I'm not saying I want all servers, hosts, hostesses, etc., etc. to be out of a job. I'm just saying that there's a few parts of the restaurant experience I think you could cut down on needless downtime. But I'm also a weirdo with respect to that, you know? As my, my wife would certainly tell you. Once me and my wife are done eating our meal, I want to be out of the restaurant in under two minutes. I get no pleasure out of sitting in their chairs, listening to their music, drinking their tap water. I can drink an endless amount of tap water. I'll just keep drinking it, then I'll have to go to the bathroom later. I want to get out, I want to go home, get in my pajamas, Watch Roger Craig's dominant performance on the Jeopardy Tournament of Champions 2011.
some people are like, ah, you know, let's just sit down and relax. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess it's, you know, two different kinds of people. More relaxed at home and can't relax at home. Or harder to relax at home. It's different, I guess, because our home is also our office, but... I know there's fellow restaurant impatientistas out there. It's not just me. Because my dad is the same way. After everybody's done eating, you know, you'll, you'll take your last bite of food. And he'll be like, you guys good to go? And you're like, dude, come on. I just finished. And then he's like, well, what are you doing? And you're like, well, good point. <laughs> All right. I'll meet you in the car. I can't deny. I mean, it's, it's not that he's wrong. Well, this has been a pretty good one. We owe a lot of this run to static tiers. Definitely some mismanaged uh, resources with respect to uh, Crooked Penny. No doubt about that. But, dude, pretty decent win. Feeling good. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It was a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. And I will see you next time. See you.